This is a signal presents about innovation. All of these companies are working in ways uh, that uh, I think large companies can embrace. So let's start with Jenna Eggers, the CEO of Neurologix. Jenna? Wow, what a day it has been. And I'm nervous to stand up here in front of you all because of all the greatness that has been shared on the stage. So thank you for taking a few minutes with me. I love the uh, title of the conference, which is Business Must Lead. And so I decided to take that lead for leading with AI when you aren't one of the big guys in tech. <laughs> So just a quick introduction, I am, uh, I've actually been working in and around AI for about 30 years. So I was a research scientist out at Los Alamos at the beginning of my career, um, working with neural nets and genetic algorithms for some optimization functions. That's really on, that, um, on your left-hand side. It's about the perception and categorization and optimization about what's going on. What we're doing now with NARA is really working on the contextualization of re re relationships between things and the um, prediction to understand that cause and effect. So, so um, most of AI, as this is um, from Jan LeCun from Facebook points out, is really focused in that blue stage. And we're starting to move the next area of AI is into that yellow stage. So that just gives you an idea of what we, a little idea of what we at Neurologics do and what I'm excited about. But I wanna give you a few tips um, about how you can lead as AI. The first is to stop thinking AI is magic. Um, that wasn't a plant earlier that uh, AI was called magic. Um, and stop thinking of it as killer robots, please. Um, you can just start thinking of it as gobbledygook, uh, as phrased by our Supreme Court, if you remember that. Uh, recently they said math is too much of gobbledygook. Um, what's interesting here is that cost function, this logistic reg regression, I'm not going to ask anyone afterwards to explain these equations, but you'll notice a lot of similarity between a, a really traditional statistical approach right there on logistic re um, regression and a neural network, right? It's just more computation. That's it. It sounds like gobbledygook, but simply put, it's math with more equations and computation going on. So that's all it is. We've been doing this for a long time. Logistic regression is way older than me, and I'm old. It's just adding more layers to that. I like to use the analogy of thinking of AI like artificial light. So artificial light didn't replace the sun, in case you didn't realize, right? But it did enable a lot of great things. It enabled us to explore new areas. It enabled us to optimize others. And it also caused us to work late at night, which isn't always a good thing. So we need to enter this realizing, think about all the great things that can be done and what are the bad things that could happen. And we need to go into this thinking about those things, go into that with the light behind us. So I hope you can use that analogy for yourself as you think about AI. Not magic, but like artificial light. So the second thing is look beyond the hype. So everybody knows that Google and Facebook are way ahead of everybody else on AI, right? So everybody knows because that's the hype. Well, I'm gonna show you, and some of this has been shown before, they're also behind some of the problems. Right? I mean, this can be seen today on Amazon. They're advertising a baseball bat and a mask. <laughs> right? There was an article after the last terrorist bombing in, in London showing if you went on and searched for some of the materials, you would find the other materials that were used for that. These are some of the best people in AI. That's not really about them, but just understand there's a lot of hype about how far ahead they are. That's a lot of hype. They have problems too. Microsoft Tay is another example. You know, Google, by the way, that's from two years ago, the gorilla example, two years ago, it's still wired, just covered 
a few weeks ago that that's still not fixed. This, on the other hand, was brought to you by a brick and mortar company, Starbucks. Look at the results of their bottom line. This is amazing. Their um, rewards application that they built, it allows them to deliver real-time personalization for, it's now over 13 million, but at the time of those results, it was about 10 million. They went from having a two-week lag in what someone bought to personalize for them and only having 30 email templates for personalization to doing real-time in their app for over 10 million users. They did that in a year. Don't tell me you can't do it. You can. Those 18% that are uh, in their app deliver 36% of the revenue. They're worth double anyone else. That's amazing. And that was done, by the way, by a brick and mortar company, an old brick and mortar company. So don't get caught up in the hype. Third is decide what's core to you. This was done by an even older company, P&G, 180 years old. Amazing company. I'm proud to work with. This is Ole Skin Advisor that Mark, Mark uh, mentioned. What was really exciting when they came to us to talk about it is they actually came to me and said, hey, we've decided that we need some AI, but we've decided that some of it is core. That core is the skin diagnostics. So we need someone to be able to take a picture of their face and guess their age and understand where the focus areas are, the place in red, and their best areas, because we want to highlight that to them as well. That's core to us. Knowing how to diagnose someone's skin from a picture is core. Knowing how to make the best recommendations off of that diagnostics isn't core. So that's where we worked with them. We get over 90% unique recommendations on tens of thousands of people every single week. That's, by the way, on about 100 products. 93% on tens of thousands of people still get a unique recommendation to them. There's a lot you can do with small data as well as big data. There's a whole bunch of variants to this. We're worldwide with them now, so they've got over 20 variants of the Olay Skin Advisor tailored to the market that they're going into, and it's really increased their engagement with their target market. I can't release all of that, they can. So ask Mark about it. So your core is unlikely to be AI research. So when people tell me, you know what? We have to hire the best and the brightest in AI. I tell them that's actually not true. I tell them you just have to hire great software engineers. And there are things that are different about great software engineers, but I got to go faster. Fourth, it takes a company. Unilever was brought up. They came out in October of last year saying they built an insights engine. I was excited about that because I thought, oh, they're going to talk about technology here. It wasn't at all about technology, it was all about their organization. So you've heard software eats the world. AI actually feeds software, not eats it. Data feeds AI, your organization feeds that data. Don't forget that, that's how you create your wow, is from your organization, because that's the virtuous cycle in AI. I see some pictures being taken. So. Lastly, get ready to learn. And I knew I'd be out of time, so I'm just going to give you two books as reference. Marty Kagan is the best at how to build tech products. That's what you're all going to be doing now. And this is a very old book. Well, I shouldn't say that old. Um, <laughs> it's younger than me. But Peter Senge and the Fifth Discipline is all about becoming a learning organization. And I believe that's what AI is going to give all of us, is that ability to be learning organizations. Ram Charan says algorithms are the single greatest instrument of change. This is the same reason why Adobe is excited about AI. I'm excited about it. You have the ability to, be, to use an instrument of change to increase your company value and increase your longevity. So I'm going to ask you to become involved in AI. Right now, it's still a lot of us computer scientists. I'm a mathematician, so I have to throw mathematicians up there too and dealing with our data and compute power. We need more people to get involved, and that includes you, 
and by the way, people not like you. So that's my request of you and thank you for the time.